Alright, this is a chart reading. Well, Cloud Gaze Astrology for Jeffree Star. Um, you know. He's an entrepreneur, he's a internet personality, a singer, and also a makeup artist online. Or a makeup YouTuber, you can say that too. But, um, yeah, it's... He's one of the controversial ones, so, you know. I feel like everybody knows him, they're just like, Ugh, I don't want to say anything. But, um, yeah, I knew Jeffrey way back when he started doing music and it was on, like, MySpace. I still think I have him on my MySpace page. I haven't seen that thing in a while. But, um, anyway, for your viewing pleasure, of course, I have playing cards that you can look at while I go over his chart. I don't really want to give, um, people too much information about his chart, because <laughs> it's pretty, uh, it's pretty superior from the other ones that I read. But, um, yeah. I, I like his chart because it does have a lot of lines to success. I'm sure that if he wanted to, he could probably start a makeup business in his garage of his old house, you know? Uh, and that's kind of how his uh, chart reads, too. So anything he touches, it would be a success. So let's see. Um, we have the Six of Hearts, which is Inner Child old flames, so he might have a few people that come back, um, maybe old, uh, old friendships also. Um, let's see, we have the Eight of Clubs. Eight of Clubs is, cl uh, quick developments, so, um, things could happen overnight for him, or ideas could happen momentarily, and then the next day they're done, like, <laughs> very quick. At deciding things. Um, we have Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is illusions, um, so there might be a lot of illusions of what he did and didn't do as far as what he could do, um, but I feel like a lot of people misinterpret a lot of things or feel like he's the only one that's, um, you know, being in the middle of drama all the time, or people drag him into drama that he was never a part of. So, let's see. We have the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is overcoming obstacles. Um, it could be <laughs> kind of adversity or controversy or just gossip in general. I feel like other people that don't have might pick on him or something to that effect to make it a little bit harder. Um, maybe, you know, things in the makeup community in general are just drama based in order to sell makeup, sell more because, oh, I said this about so-and-so and this. So there might be a lot of those type of obstacles. Um, so making ends meet uh, flexible with the two of pentacles. So there might also be a lot of decision making also of who to talk to and what to do next. Um, but yeah. it happens to the best of us. Alright, so let's go with the sun first. We have um, who you think you are. We have the sun in Scorpio, which is the ninth house of beliefs. So, belief system. Um, the ninth house usually has something to do with, like, religion <laughs> also. So, he might think of himself as a religion, as his words gospel, um, or other people might also, depending on how he talks. Um, so we have the moon in uh, Capricorn, which is how you feel most of the time. So could be like a father figure, could be more like a mentor type thing. So it's the eleven, the eleventh house of self. So this is his true self and how he believes himself to be and how he betrays himself in the public eye. Um, so, <laughs> more earth tones. Um, we have um, how he speaks and he thinks with the Mercury um, planet 
which is of Sagittarius. It's in the 10th house of Legacy. We'll get more on that later. Um, but yeah, Sagittarius, mostly not sticking to a routine, can't do a 9 to 5 to save their life. They're kind of back and forth, and um, they might have a really book schedule. So, let's see. We have how you love and how um, what you value in general. Um, with the with Venus in Scorpio, we have the ninth house of beliefs. So again, that goes back to the sun. Also, there might be a sun alliance um, with Venus and some other planets. Also, um, his chart is funny. It's like um, the sun, um, Venus, and um, Saturn are all together. The sun is per like person, like self. Um, Venus is love, and Saturn is truth, so it's very fun. And then we have also Pluto in that arrangement also, which is probably like the far back one. So it looks like a trigger, it looks like a bazooka, if you're looking at all the stars together. Um, so, it, it, it's a really interesting looking uh, chart he has. So, let's see, we were on Mars. So, Mars is in Libra, which is how you take action and show passion, um, and it's the eighth house of intensity or intimacy. So, probably very intense, very seductive type thing. Um, and then we have Jupiter. Jupiter is um, how you find luck and how you expand, um, which is Aquarius. That's the <laughs> that's the twelfth house of um, trans <laughs> transcendent. So um, how he uh, puts himself in situations, how he presents himself, um, what he plans to do, sky's the limit. Because Aquarius kind of do things that are a bit inventive and going the extra mile. Um, then we have Saturn. Saturn is your self discipline and responsibility. That's in Scorpio, so it is the tenth house of legacy. Um, so everything's legacy here. And then we have um, Uranus, which is uniqueness and where you don't fit in, which is Sagittarius, the tenth house of legacy. So you don't fit in with a lot of other people in your field or a lot of people's perspective of what is proper, polite, or what is expected. So just going in there, um, doing whatever you can to cause a scene, which I think everybody does that with Aquarius and um, Sagittarius in their spectrum of legacy and transition, or transcendent. Um, so Neptune is... Your hopes and dreams and imagination, which is um, Capricorn in the 11th house of self. So, um, yeah, you have a lot of hopes and dreams, and you feel a lot. So you might um, take somebody's disregard or self-respect personally. Like, they're with you, they should have more respect for themselves, they should be happy, blah, 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 because you're, like basically Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory. So we have Pluto. Pluto is your death and rebirth transformation metamorphosis, which is in Scorpio. Like I said before, it's an interesting alliance with your chart. Um, so it's in the ninth house of beliefs. So a lot of beliefs here. A lot of religion. <laughs> but it's like really... Like, word is gospel stuff. Alright, and then we have your Lilith. Lilith is warrior and free will. So it's in Taurus, which is another earth sign. Very earth, earth signy. Um, so it is in the third house of communications. So you could very much communicate wealth and stability, but at the same time going off on all the haters, and it's really pretty funny to see people's charts and see why they do things. And then we have the North Node, which is where you're going in this life. We have Taurus in the third house of communication. 
So however you communicate is kind of where you're going. Like when you say we're going to do this, this, and this today, by the end of the day, you're going to get there. Like there's no, there's no like, oh, we're going to stop for a coffee break. We're going to do that after we get stuff done. Like there's no, there's no like leaving this to fade or being lazy one day. It's like we have to do this now. Anyway, your empty houses, if nobody realizes, is the first house, which is identity. Which is, you know, lack of identity, of personality, puts on a fake mask. So, it might be, like, the gesture of trying to fit in, but not really. Um, usually people that have false masks, I've been asked in my DMs, um, why is the first house when empty the false mask. It's mostly you're trying to relate to other people when you yourself, your beliefs might be a little awry because of family issues or a broken childhood. Um, and, you know, it's not bad. I feel like a lot of people go through that where they're either not with their families a lot or their family separated and then they kind of feel like, you know, they're they're a little orphan, you know, <laughs> so they have to prove themselves constantly over and over again. Um, so number two, the second house, we have the house of values, which is also empty. So it is feelings of insecurity and instability. So might always feel insecure about where they're going and why, but having a need to finish, <laughs> it's like, like, you can be insecure and still get things done. Like, there's no way, like, probably not showing anxiety, but insecurity. Like, oh, I have to put on makeup. I have to make sure I have the best clothes. I have the best things. I have the best of everything in order to project that onto other people, make sure that they feel secure with me and they can relate on wanting the better things in life. So that's kind of why people, um kind of fit into the, you know, fashion industry so good because everybody's insecure about what they're doing next and then they just kind of figure it out or play around with it and make their own style. And then we have the fourth house of roots. So detachment from family and friends at times. So might feel detached, might feel like kind of like a lone shark all the time. Um, usually celebrities feel this way a lot. I've read some of their stuff. That's why I kind of don't want to do just celebrities. Um, because YouTubers just have different charts and it's fun. But, um, yeah, detachment and family problems. Probably because you feel like you don't need family or that your family's so dysfunctional you don't want them to reject anything that you come up with or be a main frame in what you're going to decide in your future and career and stuff. So taking that out of the equation allows you to just do whatever. So the fifth house of creativity is absent also. So gets bored easy, doesn't enjoy much. So it might be, you know, kind of a homebody, kind of likes to stay to themselves or likes a few, a handful of things that they're experts in. I know a lot of, um, a lot of hobbyists are like this, and a lot of collectors are like this, where they have one thing that they collect <laughs> they're experts at, or they build stuff, and they don't really have time for other people. They might get bored easily because they're always trying to reinvent themselves or reinvent what they make as a hobby, but as far as collectors go, they usually stick to one thing, and then they collect, and then they become experts in one thing. And I feel like that happens with entrepreneurs, where they fall into a certain thing that they like to do, or that they feel is necessary. So they'll do it. Probably better than the rest of them, too, so, because they get so obsessed with detail. Alright, um, number six, the sixth house is also absent, which is responsibilities. Um, so, over-reliance uh, on other people, possibly prone to illness, <laughs> I have this in my chart too, but, um, like, you always rely on other people's reviews and how they see you and good-bad 
usually people with higher vibrations will influence people with um, over-reliance on people when their sixth house is absent. So there might be, you know, more higher influences that tell you what to do. And you might follow that or you might be influenced to try something that inspires what they have said to you. Um, you might take what the haters say literally, which I don't. I'm totally fine with. But um, like anything that's not constructive criticism, you might not know what to do with it and become angry over what they say or how it's said. Um, so, you know, just be careful about that. Um, I feel like some of, some of the comments aren't necessary. <laughs> then we have this seventh house, which is also absent. Um, which is the taste for love and relationships, um, commitment issues. So you might have a bit of a commitment issue um, with sharing your stuff, joint accounts, things like that, which I feel is with everybody. Um, the seventh house is usually partnerships, but um, yeah. I feel like if you do get married, it might end a little badly, and I'm just giving you a heads up, but, um, I do feel like you have a lot to lose if you get into, like, a romantic relationship that is, like, marriage-based, um, so I would have everybody sign a prenup that lasts a lifetime, <laughs> like, you know what I mean, but, um... Yeah, like, your legacy could easily be taken from you. And I feel like that's a bit of a insecurity um, that a lot of celebrities have. So, let's see. Let's get into the symbols and what you could do if you weren't a YouTuber. Um, we have... <laughs> let's do the jobs first. These are funny. Um, we have police, government officials, reporters, um, emission... Um, Ambassadors, um, we have radio and TV commentators, talk show hosts, um, news reporters, actors, um, firemen, let's see, trade unionists, uh, forest rangers, military personnel, <laughs> dark magicians, such as myself, um, bureaucrats, mafia members, detectives, Naval officers, Salvation Army workers, um, aged care personnel, athletes, manual laborers, um, sprinters, telecom professionals. Uh, I, I feel like there was also another one in there that I didn't put on. Um, there's also the entertainment industry tab that I haven't looked at. Which was also mentioned here that I didn't want to write down. Because it goes over everything that you could possibly be in the entertainment industry. From, like, director to professional. Um, like, from cameraman to light person to, like, the theater nerds would know what I'm saying. But technical artistry. You know, like, really cool artistry. Like, if you sit down and read it, you'd probably be able to catch on really fast. Um... So, let's get into symbols. Um, so we have the Snow White case at the end of the movie. We have the triumphant arc, which is just the arc um, of, like, roses or something. If you've ever seen one of those, um, like, anchor systems that they use in rose gardens to anchor roses that climb or... Um, bushes that are kind of leaning, that type of thing. Usually they have, like, um, it's called an ivy tree, but it looks like a olive tree. It has, like, little berries on it, and it's all white berries. It could also be mistletoe. But, um, yeah, usually ivory berries are, like, really fragrant, and they cure, like, mundane things, like, like a headache or something. But yeah, that's usually what's on the card of Triumphant. Um, I think it's... I think it's the Six of Wands where they have the archway. That's kind of what I think about when I think about um, the arch. Um, anyway, the Triumphant Arch. 
And then we have the lion. We have the hand. We have the umbrella, the arrow, the horn maze. We have the lotus, the elephant, and another corn maze. So you have two corn mazes, an elephant, a lotus, an arrow, a umbrella, a hand, a lion, a tri triumphant arc, and a snow white case. So, <laughs> that would be cool for some makeup, you know, do a little makeup commercial or ad for that. Um, which would be cool. Anyway, so, after <laughs> all my talking about this, I, I always love doing, you know, cloud gaze, astrology readings. Um, because it does give you a different point of view on certain people and why they act the way they do. Um, I could go in detail with people's charts, but I kind of wanted to make it so that everybody would understand what everything meant and how it works out. And what, what each planet means, like, usually Saturn is truth because of self-discipline and stuff like that. And, you know, people take their own responsibilities a little harder than most. Some people feel like they're enforcing their own responsibilities onto other people. Other people are more laid back, like, you know, um, <laughs> Jeffree Star. And that's probably why he gets a little bit anxious when people are, uh, you know, just you're bringing them into drama, like, well, why would you do that, um, when, you know, it's too much, like, everybody tries to slow you down by saying or doing too much, or saying the wrong thing, and then you had to defend yourself, and it's, and I'm, I'm glad I'm in the spiritual community, because the worst thing that could possibly happen is that we get a bad review, and then we have to talk to each other about it, but other than that, like, Everybody, like, criticizes themselves no matter what community you're in. But in the spiritual community, you know, it's just... We might disagree on how people do it. Some people are, what they say, cherry pickers, where they pick their stuff before they present, like myself. And other people, like, do the shuffle. I can't do the shuffle because, honestly, my readings are exact. And they take longer if I shuffle, you know. I might have, like, five parts just by shuffling cards alone, you know. So I kind of want to keep them sweet and short so everybody can get in and get out with their day, you know. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope this helps you out in some way, shape, or form. And if um, Jeffree Star is watching, I hope it helps you out too, honey. And I will see you in the next reading, alright? Bye now.